Hi, I'm Gregory Wellman. I've been painting for about 20 years, and I'm a self-taught artist. I've concentrated in the last few years on portraits and wildlife. My paintings have taken me all around the world, and last year I spent a lot of time in Africa. I held two solo exhibitions and had an art residency there as well. People have asked me over the years, can you teach me to paint? I thought I couldn't be a teacher. It was something that, to me, didn't appeal. I could not see myself in the teaching role. Strangely, at some point, I just replaced the words teach and teaching with share and sharing. And it completely changed my whole outlook. As soon as I started showing people what I did, my methods, my techniques, and sharing my enthusiasm and my passion for painting, then everything came together. People said they were getting inspired by what I showed them. And if I could help people to be inspired and bring out the best of their abilities, then that's something I definitely wanted to do. It's great to work when you're inspired, but as you all know, our lives are very busy, and just when we found some time to do some painting, we sit down and it's gone. We don't feel like painting. But don't waste the opportunity. Find ways to break through that barrier. What I'm going to show you now is an exercise that I use to help me get through that. Now, what I'd like to do is choose a very simple photograph, something that I'm familiar with, something that uh, has easy, simple shapes in it, and very simple composition. Just here I have a picture of an elephant that I took in Tanzania. It's a female elephant striding towards us in the Masai Mara game reserve. It's very simple, just an elephant and a landscape. The composition is not complicated, everything about it is simple. This is an exercise to be doing a quick painting sketch. Now, I've drawn out my picture and now I'm going to go over that in paint as quickly as I can. In my palette, I've pre-mixed the colours I'm going to use. One thing that kills your creativity is spending ages mixing colours. So what I've done is chosen about six or seven basic mixes and I can get straight into the painting. I've sketched the basic composition out and what I need to do right now is to set that in paint. If we look at this here, we've got about a third of the way down. Just going to mark in my horizon line. And then I go straight for the outline of the elephant. These lines are going to be painted over by the time we get further into the painting, so we haven't got to worry too much about those. Just want to get the very, very basics of a composition in. Just going to look at the trees in the background, just give myself a little bit of an idea the size of those trees. I make them reasonably big. If I make them too small, I'll be fiddling around for ages there. So. Just delineating the main pattern. One of the reasons I chose that picture is because the strong contrasting sunlight is simplifying the elephant. That way makes the whole exercise quicker and easier. And this is about energy, getting something down as quick as possible. Remember, you're not trying to create a masterpiece. You don't have to show this picture to anybody. It's about getting going. Be a little bit more careful where we paint the end of the trunk there. Just put in a few marks to indicate creases on the nose and also just to shape the ears just a little bit so I've got a better idea where things sit. Okay, so that gives me a rough idea of the composition. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go straight in and get some of this background filled. Probably a different order to what I would do if I was painting a serious painting. Just careful with the background to make sure that the tone of it is quite light, so we give a sense of distance. I'm just going to vary the different tones. Work in some, some dark moments at the base of trees. I'm using a palette knife to help the speed and to help cover a lot of the 
canvas board that I'm working on. And I can refine those shapes with a brush later. Now for speed, I'm using permanent sap green with some lemon yellow and some ultramarine blue. Now I'm going to work on the landscape. Now the, the grasses are quite light, so I'm going to tone those down a little bit more. I've got a nice mix here of white, lemon yellow, a little bit of ultramarine, and I'm putting in a bit of yellow ochre to start warming that up as we go. Notice I'm still using the palette knife and I'm dragging the paint down vertically to help cover it quickly. Also to give it texture. Some of this I'll refine with a brush, but some of it I'll try and leave. So it'll have that sort of energy that you get with palette knife work. Now, dragging down the same colour into the foreground, but later I'll warm that up. I'm going to leave an area in my mind, I'm thinking that just around the bottom of the elephant, I'm going to be putting in some grasses there later on. So I'll leave that a little bit free of paint for now. Now I'll need a little bit more of my raw sienna or yellow ochre. We don't need to be too exact for this exercise. So what I've got here on my palette knife, I've got a mixture of some dark tones and some mid-tones. And I've got them mixed so that we get lots of different variations in the colours, just to give that sense of grasses. So I want to make the background just a little bit paler. Yeah. Now, I'm going to move on to the elephant now. I've already pre-mixed a dark tone, a mid-tone and a light tone. I'm going to use large brushes, keep using the large brushes. This is a number 12. Now, I've got a bit of bright orange colour in the background, which kind of acts as a little bit of a, a mid-tone. So I'm going to go for the light tones first. I'm basically drawing in this shape. It's amazing how instantly recognisable elephants are. You just get the general impression. This is far more about the process of, of painting, much less about whether it looks great. It's just important to make sure I shape the eyes. Go down the trunk. Need to add a little bit of burnt umber, that white. As we're all familiar with the fact that elephants tend to have some of the colours of the earth that they're living in on their skin. Let's work my way down. Now, as the trunk goes down, it, it turns, goes into shadow. So I've just started to introduce a little bit of a darker brown colour. So here I'm just working in the mid-tone. And there isn't much mid-tone. A lot of it is light and dark. And I'm using black, something I don't often do, but for the speed of mixing colours for this exercise, I think it's worth using black. One thing that makes me laugh about this picture is that you don't see any legs at all. It's just one, tr one sh central trunk. The shape comes down like a, like a heart shape or a, or a bulb and just goes down to... It's, it's a bit like a, a tree shape and you've just got this one collection of legs. And yet people do the rest of the work in their head. They just see that that is an elephant walking towards them. I'm never afraid to use my fingers. There's something quite childlike about being able to 
touch the actual paint. Still need more definition here, so I'm going to put in some dark darks. Now, I won't be painting in the eyes at all. I look closely at the picture, I can see the eyes a little bit, but we're looking for an overall, an overall shape. Let's go in there for a few more lights. The brush has got a bit dirty. I'm going to switch to another brush. Right into that. Now, definitely need some white here. Put those tusks in. And while I've got the pail, we're looking at putting a few extra marks into that. And I'll take a bit more care. There's this little bit of trunk here facing facing us. Tiny bit of tone just there on the turn. So remember, this isn't about trying to get a fantastically accurate picture. It's about enjoying the paint, stirring up your creativity. Now, back to the palette knife. I'm going to introduce a few more warm colours at the end. So I've got some burnt sienna and some lemon yellow. Of course, if one of these paintings turns out to your liking, you can always develop it. But if you do that, it's really good to try and keep that energy of the first pass that you made at it. You redefine things, but try and keep some of that lovely energy you had when you first did it. A few darker tones at the bottom of the grasses. To give them a little bit of shadow. And a little tiny bit, tiny bit of suggestion of the shadow of the elephant itself walking towards you. Just going to fill in a couple of little bits there. And definitely need some more white. OK, so there you have it. A very quick exercise. It's got me painting. It's got me slapping paint on. Um, Got my creativity up, I'm ready to paint. <laughs>